It was a hike that we would never forget, though we wished we would. My girlfriend and I were hiking in a familiar spot, just like we had done a thousand times before. The hike was going to be different, though. We'd hike three miles in, camp for the night, wake up at 5 a.m., hike up to Helen's Overlook about ten minutes from our camping spot, where we'd watch the sunrise. While she watched, I'd take a knee, we'd pull out a ring that I had bought weeks ago, and I would ask her to marry me. It was all so meticulously planned, but I hadn't taken something into account, something no one could have ever planned for. We parked in a lot of the base of the trail. I had hiked this trail and camped in these woods for years, and it seemed like a great place to bring my girlfriend after we got together. We had been for the last three years, but it had been about eight months since we'd last been up here. We had meant to go at the start of the spring, the changing seasons being our favorite time to be outdoors, but life, life had made it difficult. We were excited to get back up here after a long hiatus. We grabbed our packs and headed into the woods, following the trail that would take us to the spot where we meant to camp. Now, technically, the park service frowns on people camping near the state trails. That being said, the spot where we meant to camp was off the trail and into the woods a bit. A ranger could still wander up and tell us to leave, but sort of doubt it. I had only been able to leave once the whole time that I had been camping here, and that was on an occasion where my brother and I had built our fire too high. We were smarter now. We hadn't been discovered since then. Sure is pretty, my girlfriend said, adjusting the straps on her pack as she walked. Yeah, I agreed, looking at her more than ever. I slid my finger over the velvety top of the ring box as we walked. Couldn't wait to give it to her, see her surprise as I hit one knee, and see her tearful delight as she accepted. I mean, it, it never crossed my mind that she wouldn't. We'd get married in the spring next year and come out here camping for our honeymoon, as well we so could visit the spot again. Sometimes, however, God loves to laugh at our plans. It started with the spiders. More specifically, it started with me running face first into a spider web. It had been hung across the trail, and the little builders fled as I slept at the remains that clung to my face. I checked myself to make sure that it hadn't fallen onto me, and when I was certain it was gone, I shivered and set off again. From there, my girlfriend and I found ourselves dodging webs pretty often. They were just little spiders for the most part. And as they clustered together, the webs became more annoying. My girlfriend shrieked as one clung to her hair, and as I helped her check for stowaways, I couldn't help but feel crawly. I'd seen spiders in the woods before. They lived here too, but never like this. I had experienced that some of the late season snows would have gotten them, but here they were despite it all. We followed the trail, dodging spiders and looking for landmarks until my girlfriend finally said that she had to pee. I want to walk over this way. Keep an eye out for other hikers. I told her I would. She stepped off into the woods to do her business. When she screamed a few minutes later, I ran into the woods, expecting to find a bear or a coyote or something. Instead, I found my girlfriend leaning against a tree, shaking, as she pointed to something strange hanging from a tree. It looked like a cocoon, but it was practically throbbing with spiders. I had once seen a wasp nest hanging in the woods, a big, papery-looking one. That was what this looked like, more than anything. It was hanging from a nearby tree from thick strands of silk. I could see something rougher wrapped around the limb, too. The spiders were scuttling all over it. It was a little sickening to watch. I'm incapable of doing it justice, but but there were more spiders on this cocoon or egg sack or whatever it was than I had ever seen. They had spun webs all over trees and canopy, and they just kept spinning as they attempted to encase the little clearing in silk. This was their sanctuary, and they meant to keep it safe from people like us. What the hell is that? My girlfriend whispered. What the hell is that thing? I I didn't know, and I told her as much. As little as I wanted to get closer to it, I I couldn't help but slink closer as my curiosity cried out for a better look. The closer I got, 
The less it looked like a wasp nest, and the more it looked like cotton candy. I know what it sounds like, but it was almost translucent as I stared. I could see something inside it. It was non-indistinct. Like something seen through a dirty window, but there was definitely something inside of that webby bundle. I had to stop myself from sticking my hand out to touch it, and that was when I saw something else that drew my attention. I would have completely missed it if I hadn't gotten so close, but now I could see the corner of something purple. It was underneath the spider cocoon. In a few more months, I would have seen the bundle get big enough to cover it too as it came to the ground. Something translucent was over it, and I looked at the bottom of the mass as I reached out a shaky hand to grab for the thing. What are you doing? My girlfriend asked breathlessly. But I ignored her. My hand came shakily into contact with the thing, and it was a plastic Ziploc bag. As I lifted it, however, the back of my hand brushed against something on the bottom of the cocoon. I grimaced as something wet slid down my hand, and as I saw something black and stiff fall into the leaves, I gasped and backpedaled towards my girlfriend. As the sun shone behind the thing, I finally got a good look at what lay inside, and my suspicions were confirmed. We have to go, I said, helping her up. We, we have to go call the ranger service right now. What's going on? She asked but I didn't want to tell her until I was sure. We went back to the car and called the rangers, and in the meantime, I looked in the bag that I'd been clutching the whole way down the trail. It was a purple notebook, the kind that you get at the Dollar General for a couple of bucks, and inside was someone's journal. Her name must have been Lisa, because she signed all of her entries with it. The more I read, the more I came to understand that this was a journal she was keeping in a mental health facility after a suicide attempt. She talked about the medication that they gave her, about the groups she attended, about the phone calls with her parents that she had, and how it all helped her see that life had meaning and that she shouldn't squander it. She left the group home with a new lease on life, but that lease had soon run out. The last entry was made about four months ago, about a week before one of the worst spring storms in decades. I just can't take it. Charlie is gone. He says he can't handle my roller coaster emotions. And he took Sophie to stay with his parents for a while. My parents are trying to be supportive, but I can see what a burden I've become to them, my husband and my daughter, so I've decided to leave. I'm going to hike the trails that gave me joy, and when I find a spot that I'm not likely to be found, I'll end it. If anyone finds this, my name is Lisa Turner. I closed it as a jeep pulled into the parking lot and put it back in the bag. The rangers were a couple of younger guys, college age, still green. They told us to lead the way and we took them up to see what we had found. They laughed as we tried to explain to them what we found, joking that it was probably just a really big wasp nest. They shut up when we got to the spot, and they saw it for themselves. They called a few other people, telling us to stay close just in case. They brought a fogger and some thick suits for dealing with pests. As the spiders either fled or fell from the perch when the chemicals hit them, one of the rangers brought a ladder and started inspecting the web mass. He was an older guy and looked like he'd been doing this since pioneer times. He shook his head and asked for the limb cutter. One of the younger guys scoffed. There's no way you can cut that limb with these, Hawk. Don't need it, said the older ranger. I suppose it was Hawk. He told everyone to stand back and snipped something at the top. The whole thing came down when it burst. I saw what I feared inside. There was a woman in the cocoon. Her body bloated and rotten looking. She was covered in moving tumors that had burst and began spilling small spiders out of her. She had a rope around her neck. The purple mark still visible on the bloated skin. Her face looked peaceful despite the bulges and tumors where spiders had used her as an incubator. The police were called, and they handed them the journal and told them how we'd found the body. They thanked us, the rangers telling us that they would put our names in for accommodation. It was the old guy I was waiting for. 
He had looked like he wanted to talk to us since he cut the body down. And when he leaned in close so the others couldn't hear, I knew he meant to impart some wisdom. Well, these boys haven't seen this kind of thing before, but it's not my first time. I've been a hiker two years in and been used as a, uh, as a nest by ground wasps. Found a corpse savaged by bears, bones built into beaver dam, hikers skewered on the new horns of spotted bugs. Nature's beautiful. It's unforgiving. You eventually forget what you saw here, but never forget the lesson. Nature will take you if it can. It'll take you, it'll reshape you, and it'll use you from whatever it needs. Be careful when you're in the woods. Always be courteous to the natural order. My girlfriend and I hiked back to the car in a somber silence, neither of us having much to say. We didn't camp that weekend, but I did propose three weeks later. I did it at our favorite restaurant, an Italian place in town where we'd had our first date and she agreed to the exact amount of tears and squeals. I guess that makes her my fiancé now. And I'm glad to have her by my side. I've tried to forget what I saw in the woods that day, but I'm, a, I'm always mindful of my place. I'm in nature. Who's to say who might find me if I forget? For those of you guys that like to listen to stories which I assume is all of you since, you know, you're here, check out The Chilling App. I keep saying The Chilling App, and you can start your free trial, blah, 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 over the past couple of year, years, I think, two years? Well, here's some amazing news for all of you. Chilling is currently introducing Chilling 2.0, which brings in a bunch of new features and a fresh new look. Most importantly, Chilling is now free. That's correct, free. Not as in start free trial. I'm saying it's free. You can go to it now and it's free. So once again, like I said, start listening free today. There's links in the description down below if you guys can check that out. And if not, then hey, you're the one who's missing out. Once again, that's the chilling app. A big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Jordan Humble, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Brimstone Pandemonium, Kyle Tuna, William Wellington, Emma, Brenna Crow, Lakeda Canazales, Smiley the Psychotic, Dante Kincaid, Simba's Bloody Mojo, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Primark, Bastion Beefcake, M, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Crownable, Amber Clark, Jake Kearns, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Himbo Jerry, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Arias, Estabine, Nick Cole, Our Minsect Time, Xylobones, Angelus, Seclude, Salty Surprise, Love a Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Turtle Man, Carolinian, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ica Limchok, Dirty Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Spike Mel, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, William King, Darth Myver, Sashi Sasaku, Croconut 509, Cricket, Ready Kruger, Lisa Cottrell, Katie's Nephew, Acid System, Mog, Kiri the Sloth, Bester's Lampshade, Nico Kyo, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. To all of you guys, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you for being a huge support to me. Thank you to everybody who's in the description down below, and thank you to everyone who can even support $1 just on Patreon to help keep the content coming. 